This is Jay Arthur. People often ask me, you know, what is a control chart? What does it do for me? Why do I need one? You know, can't I just draw a plain old bar chart or something like that? And the answer is a control chart will help you find a lot of things that are going on in your process that you wouldn't be able to see otherwise. There's literally no way to progress from three sigma in the six sigma world to four sigma, five sigma, six sigma without a control chart. So how does this work? Well, let's say we're tracking something like errors. Well, it turns out we're going to plot the number of errors every day or every whatever, every period of time, and that'll create what's called a line chart. And it's also known as a time series chart because it shows the time over of the flow of the process. Now, with the line chart, you can't really tell if anything's good or bad or stable or predictable. It's just a chart, all right? And so the first iteration of this was to change this to what's called a run chart. And we added an average line. And the average line here actually divides all this up. And so with all of that, we can start to see what's going on in our process, whether points above or below and so on. And there are some ways to analyze runs in this type of chart and figure out if there's something unusual going on. But with the advent of modern software like the QI macros, it's unnecessary. We can just jump right over to a control chart. So a control chart begins, we start looking at the variation. So how far is each point from the center line? And if we take that bit of data, it turns into what's called the standard deviation. And that allows us to calculate an upper control limit and a lower control limit. And this type of chart would be known as a Levi Jennings chart. There are other ways we can calculate variation. So for an XMR or X moving range chart, here you can see there's a difference between each point. And that's what we use as our variation. That helps us figure out how to create a control limit. In the X-bar R chart, we may be sampling four data points or five data points, and the range between those data points is what we use to start to figure out uh, the variation and to calculate upper and lower control limits. Now, each control chart, once it's created, has one, two, and three standard deviation lines. The upper control limit is three sigma, and the lower control limit is minus three sigma. And that allows us to divide it up into zones here. So the first zone, called Zone C, has almost two-thirds of all of your data. The next zone up, Zone B, that includes 95.5% of your data. And the total outside would be 99.7% of all of your points should fall within the control limits. Now this enables us to do some analysis and figure out, is there something potentially uh, out of control or out of whack with our process. So as you can see here, 99.7 means 997 points out of 1,000 should fall in here. Maybe only three points should fall outside of that control limit. Well, if you have something like you only have a, a dozen or more data points and you have one point outside that control limit, that's potentially an unstable condition. And this is one of the first rules that came out. Uh, these were developed at Western Electric in 1920. So you have to understand these have been around a while. There's no uh, magic. This has all been tested. And once you have this out of control point, then we might want to come in and do some root cause analysis or special cause analysis. And we'd ask the five whys. Well, why was this point out of control? And that's what we want to do in each one of these types of conditions. Now, given that we have all these other lines, we can figure out some other potentially unstable conditions. So here you can see zone B, we should have 95% of our data points in there. But if we have two out of three above two standard deviations or below two sigma, then that's two thirds of your points, right? So two thirds are outside. That seems to be out of whack with our 95% in this zone. Similarly, if we have four out of five points above one sigma or below one sigma, that's 80% of your points are outside of zone C here. And two-thirds should be in here, so that seems like an out-of-whack kind of condition. We could also have eight points above or below the center line. This is what's known as a run. 
one wouldn't expect there to be that many points above the center line. We can also see things like a trend. So six points descending or six points ascending are considered to be a trend. Another type of out of control condition is what's called hugging. If you have 15 points in a row right here in zone C, well guess what? Uh, we should have some points outside of here. Uh, so that means that for some reason the data is maybe being manipulated and needs to be investigated. So when you do have a stable control chart, as this one is, where there's just points and there's no, nothing out of control, then we can start to make improvements. All right, so we'd want to reduce the variation. So we want to take our variation and start to reduce and move the average line, in this case it's errors, and reduce the, the spread or the variation from the upper to the lower control limit. So that's our goal. That's what we want to create when we start making our improvement projects go forward. So that's what a control chart is. I mean, it's not that hard. And with modern software like the QI macros, all you need is some data. Here we have injuries. Simply select that data with your mouse. Click on the QI macros. In this case, we're going to do a C chart. We could have used the control chart wizard to select it, but I'm going to select it automatically here. And it'll go off and prompt you for titles and show us a couple of out of control conditions here. All right, so in essence, our process has a couple of out of control points and then it seemed to have come back into control. And so that will give you control charts easily and effortlessly. It's easy to draw them and the software will look up the out of control points for you. So that's it. Download a 30-day trial of the QI Macros from QIMacros.com. You can also take my free Lean Six Sigma Money Belt training online at LSSMB.com. I'm Jay Arthur. Get out there and start making some improvements.